My name is Patrick Brady. Uh, I spent 34 years in the military, came through ROTC, served all over the world. Uh, I was in Berlin when they built the wall, <clears throat> the Dominican Republic, Vietnam for two years, Korea and the DMZ, and uh, retired as a Major General. The most productive Part of my career was the two years I spent as a dust-off pilot in Vietnam. All we did day in and day out was pick up the wounded from the battlefield. And that was the first time that that's really been done. Although in Korea in World War II they did use the helicopter for evacuation, Vietnam it reached its apex. We really refined the resource. Between my first and second tour, first tour, the whole unit, five helicopters, carried <clears throat> 4,000 patients. Uh, there were 16,000 Americans in country. My second tour, there were 500,000 Americans in country. And in one unit, we would carry almost 5,000, 4,000 patients a month. And we did it with three aircraft. And to give you an example of the workload in that unit, we had a 40-man detachment. We had six aircraft. At any one time, we would have three aircraft flyable because of enemy action. We had an aircraft shot up every four or five days. 116% of aircraft shot up every month. 40-man detachment, 26 Purple Hearts. Uh, we carried over 21,000 patients in 10 months. Big difference. But the resource by that time was so well defined and the operation was so efficient and effective that we would carry, if you were shot in a jungle in Vietnam, your chances of survival were greater than if you were in a highway accident in America. So the great untold story about Vietnam is a humanitarian effort that went on over there. The GI, while he was fighting, he was fixing, he was building hospitals, he was building orphanages, he was caring for those people, vaccinating them in every way helping them during the battle, something that's never happened before in warfare. It's, it's a humanitarian victory that's unparalleled in our history of military uh, combat. The story never got told, and it's mainly because the media had a different narrative. The politicians in America were essentially cowards, and as a result, we left those people helpless, and the communists slaughtered them after we left. So uh, the day of the medal was no different than any other day. The difference, I think, uh, in a medal is somebody saw what you did. And they thought enough about you to stop and to write it down. And that's the great part of the medal. Your fellow soldiers, the eyewitnesses, those people cared enough about what you did that they would write it down. Many people did, did much more. Nobody saw it. Nobody wrote it down. That day I used three aircraft. I picked up patients. We picked up patients in fog, in uh, weather conditions that were unique. Uh, may not have ever happened before, but we found a way to do it. Uh, they say we got 51 patients. We picked up probably 100 patients that day. Uh, and we had, we had uh, I guess they told me afterwards, we had over 400 holes in our aircraft. So a lot of those were mines. We, we landed in a minefield that blew up uh, right beside the helicopter. Wounded two of my crewmen, but didn't kill them. And, uh, and we got out, uh, we were able to, very successful in getting out as every wounded in the countryside, as we did every day. Uh, every person in the countryside, we got them out. So you get the question, <clears throat> Uh, uh, the, and this is a thing we try to bring to the young people, or I do anyhow, that, you know, in all the ways we're not born equal, there's only one way we're born equal, uh, and that's courage. You can have all the courage you want, you can't use it up. It's the key to success in life, but where does it come from? In my uh, judgment, it's a function of faith. I can tell you that, and people say this is kind of strange, but I was never afraid in combat. I've been almost dead a bunch of times. I've been afraid in life, certainly. Used to box a little bit, get in the ring with a big ugly guy, you're scared. And, uh, but not in combat, uh, because I was busy, I was praying all the time. The techniques that I found to make rescues in combat were the result of my prayers. How to get a guy out of the fog, how to get him out of the mountains at night in the, 
tropical storm. We found ways to do that. And uh, it was just as simply a function of my faith. It's just, that, it's just that simple. I wouldn't try to define it for somebody else, but it's a, it's a belief, a simple belief that there's something above and beyond a particular moment, someone who's a source of goodness, and something that's worth dying for. And uh, I think that's common to a lot of soldiers. That's, that's, that's a loose word, and, uh, and this is another thing we try to teach the young people. There's a big difference between a hero, and I could give you examples of personal heroes of mine. And they all, not only were they courageous, uh, but they had one other very important thing, uh, characteristic in common. They were good people. You can't be a hero and not be a good person, in my judgment. Celebrities are not always good people. Neither are athletes. So we should teach our young people to look up to those who are really heroes. Parents, teachers, coaches, policemen, firemen, the people who do courageous things every day and who are also good people. So the essence of a hero is, in my judgment, goodness. And I can give you story after story of guys in combat. Three Purple Hearts, three Silver Stars, you name it and uh, they were heroes because they were good people. Well, the, the you know, I've often said this in, in crude ways, but <clears throat> of all the thrills in life, I don't care what you're talking about, physical, food, romantic, of all the thrills in life, there's nothing that can match saving a life. And I experienced that a couple times when I was young. I, 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 at least I thought it, you know, I, I rescued a guy who was drowning once and another guy who was falling off a cliff and, and uh, those things were thrilling to me at the time, although, you know, who knows what the memory does to you. I thought I saved their lives. But when you do that day in and day out, there's no thrill like it. I mean, it's like, it's like uh, a walk-off home run. It's like, uh, 40-foot putt to win a tournament. And there's nothing in the world that can match the thrill that you get from overcoming obstacles, finding a way through the weather, finding a way around the enemy to get into an area and to load people who are going to die if you don't get to them. Get them to a hospital and the physicians will save their life. And then afterwards, you relax, you really feel good, and then you do it all over again. The medal is a symbol. For us, it's a, it's, a, it's a way in to leave a message. A symbol is from, from the Greek word half token, uh, like the American flag. That's a symbol. The other half token of the American flag is the Constitution. And when you put them together, it's something above and beyond just the symbol. The medal is a symbol. The other half token of the medal is courage, sacrifice, uh, service, and, and, uh, and uh, the definitions that we pass on to the children about who is America's nobility and what is a hero. Patriotism, absolutely essential. And uh, we, we can have a country where a whole lot of people say they love their country, but if they won't support and defend it, they're not patriots. That's the essence of patriotism, support and defend. And I always tell the story about a great, another Medal of Honor recipient uh, Webster Anderson, great black soldier, big powerful guy. He was on a mountaintop in Vietnam. He was overrun by the communist. The initial attack, they pretty much took off both his legs. He kept fighting. Next attack, they threw a hand grenade into his position. He grabbed the hand grenade, and when he tried to throw it loose, it pretty much took off his arm. And uh, I flew in and picked up what was left of Webster that night and his wounded. And we took him to the hospital. They saved his life, but not his legs, not his arm. And he got the Medal of Honor. Well, he kind of credited me for saving his life, even though it was the physicians that did it. But in any event, we became very close. And we would talk to kids. And one <clears throat> episode with some children in Oklahoma defined for me patriotism. And I think it defined for those kids forever patriotism. One kid asked him, they said, Mr. Anderson, knowing what you know now, Knowing what it would cost, two legs and an arm, 
would you do it over again? And Webster looked at that kid and he says, young man, he says, I've only got one arm left, but my country can have it any time they want. Stun those kids. And to this day, I bet there's not one young man who was in that many years ago, in that who does not remember that great black soldier propped up, no legs, one arm, telling them that the, his country can have the other arm any time they want. That's patriotism. And we use vignettes in our character development program to uh, what is courage, what is a hero, what is sacrifice, the key to the happiness in life. And uh, it's a great program. Truly the best thing we've ever done, and I've been in the society for 40 years.